cosmos, cosmic. I was pondering these words this week and I just kept thinking about cosmic bowling or cosmic mini golf and the dark black light with the flashing neonness that goes on around you in those games. That's not exactly what we're talking about. And I also thought of that pinkish drink, also not what we're talking about. <laughs> and I also thought about the magazine, also not what we're talking about. Cosmos, cosmic, an attempt to capture the inconceivably vast nature of God. The simultaneous complexity and intricateness that is our world. And if you think about it, it's kind of an anticlimactic end to our season of creation. I mean, we've been talking about nature and we've been talking about seeing God in nature and our creating God and giving thanks to God. And so why have a whole Sunday about all of the cosmos anyway? And I realize that the why is because it allows us to really wrestle with the complexity of it all. Now, as humans, we like to try to define things. We like to try to define God, right? We want to we want to make sure we we understand it, we get it. And so we try to explain God using the words that we have. Maybe God present on a mountaintop or in our church building or in some box that we have created of our own doing that has all the parts of God in it that we want and leave out the parts of God that we don't want. You can have those parts if you want, but my box of God doesn't have that. But when we consider the cosmos and a cosmic God, we have to stretch. We have to stretch beyond our understanding, beyond what we can easily grasp, beyond what we're comfortable with, to the wildest reaches of God. And when we consider cosmic, we are free to say that God is the creator of the world. But we don't have to give up our understanding of evolution while we do that. We can say that God is creator of the world and understand that our Bible contains at least three different creation stories, at least. We can understand God as creator and also understand that we don't have to understand the how and the why and the when and all the details that our human minds actually really want to get. We want to have all those answers but it's actually incomprehensible. Even given that it's some 2,000 some odd more years later than when our Bible was written and we have all the science advancement that we have going on in our world today and it's still incomprehensible. How our world works. The majesty of that web and our interconnectedness is beyond, maybe it's just me, but beyond what we can really begin to grasp. And that is just the glimpse at our cosmic God, our cosmic God who created it all and is still somehow present in the minute 
detail of it all. Visible and invisible, a reminder that God is present and far beyond all at the same time. So when we are considering all of this, sometimes I find that I need to sort of suspend my ability to explain and understand everything, which is hard, and sit in awe. To sit and notice the splendor of our world. Now, have you been seeing out and about those orb weavers that are those really big spiders and they leave these amazing webs in between our hedges and you walk head first into them, <laughs> right? That's less than amazing. But overnight, this creature has created this magnificent web that I could barely do with the children this morning. Have you noticed a hummingbird? It flies backwards. It hovers. It flies sideways. What is that? Or have you noticed that you glance in a direction of the sky and you look back a few minutes later and there are huge clouds? Where did they come from? I have no idea. I mean, there's explanations for these things, but still. Or the hawk who just soars seemingly effortlessly in the sky or by my kid's school, there's a critter that lives underground by the sidewalk. And I think it's every day the custodian of the school shovels the dirt up and every morning the dirt is back on the ground. Our world, our cosmic world is incredibly vast. And if ever there was a word to define God, that might be it. Vast beyond our ability to comprehend, vast beyond our ability to explain, vast beyond our ability to grasp. And our scriptures today attempt to put words to that indescribable cosmic nature of God. And of course, they fall short, but they're beautiful nonetheless. Psalm 148 captures the praise that our world does. That each and every living thing praises God from the ocean creatures to the cr smallest critters to the large beasts. And they praise God by doing their thing, whatever it is their thing might be as a creature. And we can imagine the psalm writer sitting out in nature, jotting down that psalm, describing the things that they're seeing around them in that beautiful hymn of praise. And today we also have the hymn from Colossians. And this is the Christ hymn. And we, we get a picture that is more than just historical Jesus walking on earth. We get a cosmic Christ picture. One who holds together the entire Christian community. Now, now, this hymn verse comes to us, we remember, having been written after Jesus had died, after the resurrection, the friends are all facing persecution, they're in hiding, and they're trying to make sense of the world that they're trying to follow Jesus and what to do about that. And this sense that the cosmic Christ is holding them together. Weaving them in a web together when the world around them was threatening them. The cosmic Christ was stirring in them through the actions of baptism and communion. Holding them together. Those actions that Jesus 
experience and asked them to do. It is this cosmic Christ that holds us together as a Christian community today. Reminding us that we follow in the footsteps of that historical Jesus to do the things that he did, to stand on the side of the oppressed, to stand up for the disenfranchised, to notice those who are lost. This cosmic Christ as the head of our church holds us together when we look at homelessness and what we might do. The cosmic Christ holds us together when we welcome a child in our midst exactly as they are. The cosmic Christ holds us together when we reach beyond our walls to provide welcome to everybody. The cosmic Christ is at work in us, holding us together when we are living and acting like the church. Yesterday, I read an article in the Wall Street Journal entitled, Religion for Adults Means Embracing Complexity. Colon, if you think you've outgrown your childhood faith, you might just need to discover the real depths of its teaching by Sarah Hurwitz. In this article, she invites the adults of all the world's organized religions to wrestle with complexity. She invites us to think about how in middle school science, so imagine yourself back in middle school in science, you start learning about chemistry and biology. And if you had given up the first time you didn't understand something, you probably wouldn't have graduated, right? Because it's complex thinking. And she said, our faith is the same way. If the first time your Sunday school teacher tells you something about faith that you don't understand, you just are like that's it, I'm out, then you probably wouldn't graduate. And there's no graduating in church, but that we have to keep using our reasoning and our thinking and our wrestling to delve into the complexity, the vastness that is science and God and faith. When we try to put limits on God. When we try to use words to capture God, we usually fall short. When we fail to wrestle with faith in the same way that we're taught to critically think and engage with all of our senses when we're students, we fall short. Our God is inconceivable and amazing in the same way that space, the vastness of space is almost beyond our comprehension and yet it's amazing. And the intricate nature of our world, our natural world and the interconnectedness of it all is incomprehensible, and it's amazing. Friends, our God is present with us, and yet is creator of all. God is beyond our understanding, and more than even our best attempts at words can capture. And sometimes, actually a lot of times, the very best thing we can do is to just marvel at it. Marvel at the world and our creator God. Sometimes 
We have to really engage our mind and explore the amazement of it all and stand in awe. But however it is, wherever we are in our wrestling, God is. Our cosmic God and our cosmic Christ is so much more that we can't help but sing our praises. May it be so. Amen.